Hi and welcome to this look at the 14 day weather prospects. December started with quite cold weather but in the last few days it has turned a lot milder. In actual fact the central England temperature is currently running slightly above a 30 year average. Now as we go through the next week it does look like things are set to change so I will start off by uh, taking a look at, at the picture across Europe and North Atlantic as usual. Here we are, this is a chart for 06 GMT, Wednesday the 16th of December and what we can see is there's an Atlantic flow covering the UK. We've got quite a deep area of low pressure centred over Northern Ireland. That's bringing uh, wet and windy weather to much of the country today. And if I now play the sequence, let's see what happens during the next few days. Here we go. So through Thursday, and Friday and I'm going to stop it here at midday on Saturday the 19th of December. By then not a great deal has changed we've still got low pressure up to the northwest here just south of Iceland dominating things. There's a west or southwesterly flow across the UK that means it's going to be staying pretty mild. All regions can expect further showers or longer sp uh, spells of rain uh, typically the wettest conditions in this type of pattern are going to be in the west and the northwest of the UK. I'll restart the sequence. Here we go through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and I will stop it here at 21 GMT Tuesday the 22nd of December. This is where things start to become quite interesting. Of course, Christmas isn't far away. Um, and at this point, we've got uh, areas of low pressure tracking across southern and central parts of the United Kingdom. They look set to bring periods of heavy rain and potentially strong or very strong winds for a time. I wouldn't focus too much on the details at this range, but the key thing is what the broad scale picture is. So what we see here is these areas of low pressure pull away eastwards or northeastwards and behind them much colder air starts to filter down from the north or the northwest and that could well be setting the theme for the Christmas period. Obviously there are two factors um, regarding the likelihood of snow. The first is will it be cold enough? And the second is, will there be any precipitation around? I'm going to bring up another uh, GFS chart. This one is for zero GMT, Wednesday the 23rd of December. Um, it's from the same model run which the sequence was generated from and it's really, it's, it's another way of looking at the same data. We're looking at the wider picture here. I've highlighted the UK and what we can see here to the west is quite a big area of high pressure in the Atlantic. That is looking as though it will build pretty quickly eastwards towards the UK and if it does we can expect it to be mainly dry but pretty cold, not very cold but pretty cold as we head into the Christmas period. So. I would suggest at the moment the chance of snow or at least widespread snow um, next week is quite low. However with colder air around and the potential for at least a few showers it wouldn't surprise me at all if some parts of the UK do see snow at times or at least falling snow. Whether that coincides with Christmas Day well who knows but it may well do in one or two places. I'll bring up the ensemble data here to go a little bit further ahead to see what could be happening as we head through the Christmas period and into the new year. This chart is for London and what we can see on the upper half is 850 HPA temperatures. In the short term they remain above the 30 year average which is highlighted by this black line running more or less horizontally across the chart. By the 23rd of December they start to fall away and the purple line which you can probably just make out 
is the average of all the runs in the ensemble model. And we, what we can see is it's falling below the 30-year average by the 23rd, the 24th of December, dipping down to around minus 5C, and then it's staying below the 30-year average at least until about the 28th or the 29th of December, at which point there's a signal for, the, uh, for it to become less cold. And by the end of the run, it's, it's, we're seeing a pretty average uh, picture overall. Although that is probably masking a number of milder and colder runs. They're probably by that range starting to cancel each other out as the balance becomes more evenly spread. The other point I think is worth drawing attention to here is these runs are not, this is not suggesting a very cold spell of weather. If, if for very cold conditions, we'd be looking at a number of these runs dropping down to the minus 10 level and, and staying there. What we see on this plot is that none of them really do actually make it. One or two dip down to minus 10, but they don't stay there. The vast majority of them are showing 850 HPA temperatures in the minus 5 Celsius range. So rather cold, not very cold is probably the, probably the watchword for it. At the bottom we can see the precipitation outlook and in the short term not particularly wet in, uh, in, in London and the south. Things change by the 19th or 20th early next week as well and that's due to those areas of low pressure which are expected to be crossing the UK we, at least for southern half of the UK as we saw on the um, animation. Once they move away it actually looks like it's going to turn quite a lot drier again. There are still some precipitation spikes in the on, in, on the rest of the plot but generally it looks quite dry and I think that really offers some more support for what I was talking about, which is high pressure building in relatively quickly from the west as we uh, as as things turn colder next week. So it looks like a relatively cold and dry theme will become established rather than a cold and wet one. So another another signal that there isn't likely to be a great deal of snow around, if any. Let me quickly jump up to the comparable plot for Glasgow. It's a similar story. Um, 850 HPA temperatures actually dip down below the 30 I mean uh, quicker than they do in London, so around about the 20th or the 21st. And then they stay below the average actually right until the end of the run. There's just a signal for them to begin returning towards the average by, by the new year. But again, it's the same story. It's a rather cold picture that's being shown by this, not a very cold one. On the lower half, we see uh, precipitation. The, there's a big difference here. In the short term, it's much wetter than in the London area. But also, again, what we can see is next week, in the run up to Christmas, through Christmas itself, and, and a few and a few days after it, it's it's looking drier. So once more, that is more evidence for a high pressure dominated period of weather. By the end of the year, so around about the 29th here, 30th of December, there are more rainfall spikes beginning to appear, possibly suggesting that high pressure will be having less influence on things um, by then, at least in the northwest of the UK. But that's, that really is very uncertain at this stage. If I briefly show you the postage, postage stamp chart, chart, which is plotting uh, pressure patterns from each of the runs in the GEFS. Um, this particular one is valid on Friday the 1st of January 2021. So, the, so New Year's Day, and what we can see by then is that they are quite difficult to read on the small screens, I know, but the key thing to look for is the areas of yellow and orange shade in which essentially are signifying high, higher pressure. The UK here, you can see hopefully it's more or less in the centre of each of these individual plots. Now I won't spend 
a great deal of detail uh, time looking at these in detail but one of the key things to note is that high pressure even by that point would seem to be having quite a lot of influence on the UK's weather on many of these individual plots. A good signal for very unsettled and stormy conditions of westerly or southwesterly flow is to look for purple shading to the northwest of UK as we can see on this one plot 13. Hopefully you can see it if I wave my mouse pointer around. So we're looking for this purple and deep blue shade into the northwest of the UK towards Iceland, Greenland. That's really tending to indicate a, a vigorous Atlantic flow, um, bringing very, very unsettled conditions to the UK, or the likelihood of very, very unsettled conditions. We actually don't see that on many of these plots at all. There is an expectation with a lot of long-range forecasts that as we head through January, the Atlantic will really step up a gear and will be into a pretty mild, wet, windy, even potentially stormy uh, spell of weather. That could well be the case. However, at the moment, there isn't, there isn't too much evidence appearing for it, in, at least not in the 16-day plots. I'll finally show you the uh, surface level pressure plot, the 35 day one for London, just to really add a little bit more weight to what I was saying there. This goes out to about the 17th of January and what we can really see is the mean surface level pressure. Um, it looks it looks like it's probably going to not really be particularly low. It looks, it looks like high pressure may well be continuing to have quite a lot of influence, at least on the southern half of the UK, as we go through the first half of January. As I say, that would run probably counter to a number of the long range forecasts for this winter, but let's wait and see how things play out. So to bring up the summary. It's an unsettled and mild start with wet and windy at time, wet and windy weather at times in all of the UK, but particularly the northwest. As we head through next week, things are set to turn colder, and there could well be some wintry showers around. But with high pressure probably building in quickly from the west, the uh, the, the emphasis I would suggest is going to be on dry conditions. So chilly with nighttime frost and fog quite quite probably developing widely but not a great deal of snow if any uh, beyond that things uh, become more uncertain there is a suggestion that high pressure will continue to have a good deal of influence on the uk's weather even as we head into the new year but that is a long way off and by then uh, forecast confidence is pretty low. There we have it. Thank you for watching this. If you found it useful, please remember to hit the subscribe button below. Then you'll be informed when I publish forecasts and updates. Also, don't forget to give it a like if you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much now. Bye.